Here we are in the second part of the ZBrush portion of this workflow. Um, we've moved a little bit further along. You can see that some of the elements have been refined a bit further, um, but all of it is relatively um, pretty simple, uh, at the, but just getting some primary forms in place and then adding uh, some details to those surfaces um, to add a little bit of complexity. So as we jump along here, you can see that I've actually gone back to that same geometry that I imported from Character Creator 3. Um, it's very important here that we do not change the topology of this surface. That vertice count has to be the same because we are actually still linked with Character Creator 3. So you can definitely, uh, you know, save out your Character Creator 3 file and your project um, and reopen later. Uh, but so long as nothing changes here, we shouldn't have any issue re-importing this back on top of that existing uh, avatar inside of Character Creator 3. Uh, so this is actually speeding through here pretty quick, but uh, you know, this was pretty organic process just following, uh, you know, what uh, would be the real human anatomy of this form. So just carving out that deltoid plate, but just giving the indication that there is uh, um, some additional uh, engineering to this, this form, this kind of uh, biomechanical um, arm or cybernetic arm attachment that our character is utilizing so it's very <laughs> cyberpunk so uh, i just want to kind of go in and, and the trick is with anything like this to just try and find something a little different and uh, as well just utilizing tools at my disposal here uh, to actually get some visual cheats so if you'll notice i applied some black uh, poly paint in there uh, where I want it to stand in for some uh, cavities on the surface uh, because if I carve in too much into that geometry, um, we'll get some wonky surfaces in there. And I, I don't want anything to um, pinch or pull or distort too much uh, when I get it back into Character Creator 3. So it's it's more of a visual cheat that I know I can utilize later on in, to paint into uh, to get the desired effect that I'm looking for. So we're going to move through this clip a, a little bit further um, and kind of peek in uh, a little bit further into the progress as I make some additional uh, detailed tweaks. So as you remember in the initial sketch, I had some red breakup from the rest of the armor designed to match uh, the actual physiology of the human anatomy. So I've gone in here and I'm kind of breaking up some of those forearm extensors and those muscle groups in, in the forearm uh, and just kind of carving out some of these details. So you notice they're not individual separate components. It's all part of that geometry um, and we can easily handle um, some of the displacement or bumps with maps exported out of ZBrush later on in the process to bring into Character Creator to actually bring some of the sculptural data um, over to Character Creator. Uh, so yeah, just kind of refining tricep there, polishing, always moving around the design, just trying to see the way everything's reading there. I just unified some of the material. So you really get that break up there of that cybernetic arm. Um, so even though we have the illusion of it being this separate component, it is actually part of that one piece of unified geometry of the entire avatar there. Um, and, and of course you can certainly, you can subdivide your geometry up once you bring over that low res geo from character creator, which is great. Um, so that allows you to get that detail, but ultimately what you're sending back over is that low resolution. So we'll talk in greater lengths in uh, future chapters about uh, exporting those maps and experimenting with different effects bringing them into uh, uh, character creator because there's a few different things you can do to get some uh, some different effects inside um, character creator once you get your avatar back in there uh, so yeah just continuing to sculpt that out playing up the idea of that cavity as I mentioned before so not only carving in but also using that black paint to really sell the depth of that sculpt so treating it like a uh, you would a, a traditional uh, you know, model if I was handling this with paint on top of model just with the equivalent uh, equivalency of washes or, or dry brushing. Um, in this case, using 
a wash to bring out those panel lines. So in this case, as I'm carving in, I'm also applying um, that much darker uh, black value into those cavities there. Um, so here, just a slight extrusion out, just to indicate a, a, a panel there on the wrist. Um, a seam brush, custom seam brush here to uh, kind of indicate that maybe there's some material breakup there, maybe a futuristic uh, uh, fabric material. As this is for concept, too, uh, there's a certain level of polish I get it to so that, you know, uh, these forms will read like here, especially with anything hard surface. I'm trying to polish some of these facets, some of these face changes on the forms just uh, a little bit more um, than, say, on an organic form because I do want the light to catch those shapes properly. Um, but if there's any, um, you know, uh, I, I suppose any sort of... Uh, uh, screw ups in the surface, I can always go back in later on and, and simply paint that out. Um, so here, just working with some custom alphas and making sure that any of the textural detail I bring in is purely supplementary. Uh, just they already serve the uh, information that's already there, so it's purely supplemental. I'm still carving out and making decisions about the design as a whole. Um, all those little details serve to be just interesting greebles and, and elements to add complexity to it that really sell the idea that this is um, this kind of futuristic cybernetic arm here. So this is about as far as I kind of bring uh, this through before moving on to other parts of the costume. Now we've jumped over and we have started to work on some of the additional wardrobe using uh, the Dynamics tool now introduced in ZBrush 2021. So you see very quickly just introducing a primitive to get this skirt. The great thing about working directly inside of ZBrush and with these new Dynamics is I don't have to jump over to another program. Um, so just using very simple techniques like blocking out this cylindrical shape and trying to slice out um, that skirt form uh, that we had in the initial sketch. So even though in reality, me that skirt is a number of, uh, you know, different folded patterns here, I'm just looking for what that silhouette shape actually is. And it's that kind of sash shape over one hip draping uh, to one side to give us that asymmetrical read. Um, so I've gone through, um, I've remeshed uh, the uh, uh, surface here and you can see just kind of experimenting with some of the tools um, at our disposal here. And what's great is I was able to actually contract that form um, uh, using the underlying geometry. So you can see the move tool actually uh, takes advantage of the sort of uh, uh, visible geometry. Uh, so I actually contracted it first and now I'm letting gravity uh, run over. Uh, and you can see still keeping the geometry relatively low in this process and just kind of letting it drape. So uh, your mileage may vary depending on what machine or what your machine specs are. Um, you know, mine's sort of middle of the road here. So uh, sometimes it just needs a little extra TLC to get the desired results. Um, you can see I do have dynamic uh, subdivision on. Uh, for those of you not familiar with the process, dynamic is essentially a uh, smoothing preview of your geometry. And now in 2021, uh, not only does it smooth it in a preview, but it actually can give you a uh, dynamic thickness. So you can actually have single-sided geo, but actually preview uh, a, um, an extruded mesh. So here I'm just getting some folds there, trying to get that draping over that hip. So you can see where it does need a little bit of extra finessing here and there. Um, it is artist-driven, so to me, I'm, I'm kind of you know, forcing it into a place where I feel um, it's going to resemble that sketch much closer to show that maybe there's pinching near the top of her left hip and draping from that corner uh, without it looking too uh, blobby. But what's cool, because it's picking up that colliding geo underneath there, so you can see that upper thigh panel is kind of uh, peeking its head through there. So you can, of course, uh, adjust further modifiers to, uh, you know, get the, the desired effect of what you're looking for. And the cool thing here is if this is built in, um, 
you know, that these folds, these dynamic folds in the geometry will look good on most poses that I put my character into inside of Character Creator 3. Uh, the other cool thing here is, uh, and we'll get into this later on, but uh, you have the ability to actually pose your mesh in, inside of Character Creator, bring it back over, and then you could always resim, um, and then send that resim back over to Character Creator. So a little bit of back and forth, but uh, you would get uh, extremely accurate draping. But of course, there is physics inside of Character Creator, so you absolutely have the ability to use that. So uh, you can play around with the different tools at your disposal to get some pretty quick results. Um, now, of course, as I've mentioned a few times during this process already, um, this really is a demonstration for concept. Uh, but the cool thing about 3D is then you do have an asset that, you know, you can potentially hand over to the rest of the, the production pipeline uh, to be utilized. So as I finish up the skirt here, you'll see that I'm kind of going back through um, allowing myself to uh, remesh, make some additional changes, and then just continue experiment. So you can see, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that reference is in place. Now you can see uh, what I'm calling out to is the fact that that um, skirt is draping um, from a, a particularly different angle. But uh, in, in reality, though, um, I'm actually getting much more of a natural uh, draping there, which is, which is really great. So, um, it did make some adjustments for, from the sketch. Uh, but as I mentioned before, you know, the sketch is in place, um, uh, you know, for initial approval to make sure you're going the right direction, but then ultimately you want to improve upon that initial sketch. Um, so as we move through here, um, I do want sort of a quilted pattern on there, even though it's going to be this clear plastic material inside of Character Creator. Um, right now, what I'm doing is essentially applying um, a texture map to it, utilizing just a very quick UV tool inside of ZBrush using uh, the UV Master plugin um, to just quickly unwrap this so that I get these different faces and they're polygrouped essentially in the inside, the outside in that sort of um, seam along the edges so I can isolate a, a polygroup to that internal form. Um, and actually using, um, it's a multi-step process, basically bringing a texture in and then now that you can actually sculpt or paint on a flat UV inside of ZBrush, I just, you can uh, morph that UV, apply that map, flat that surface, and then uh, apply uh, that texture so that I can actually get some poly paint in there that I can then use to uh, convert to a mask. Um, so I was using that to inflate and kind of give that quilted pattern evenly across, evenly distributed across that pattern. And so you can see I'm just kind of fixing some of that interpenetration for, with her belt there um, that I think is potentially going to be an issue. And, and like I said, with this costume being so uh, tightly fit to uh, my avatar here, I don't uh, really don't want, uh, you know, anything to be um, out of place at this stage. Um, I, I really want everything to work pretty well so that when I bring over to Character Creator, it does fit her like a glove. So, no. <laughs> uh, uh, perfect uh, segue here as we actually do move on uh, to the glove here, uh, utilizing the same method that I've demonstrated a few times already during this process of just a simple mask of the existing surface of our avatar uh, for that piece of uh, wardrobe, um, in this case, a, a glove, and uh, using an extraction to, to get that glove. And this is only going to be, I believe I only select it on, I'm not sure if I do both hands here, because um, I'm trying to keep that biomechanical one separate over to that side, so you can see I'm just focusing on the one here. But I, I just make a, a few tweaks, just a couple of folds, here and there, um, nothing too complicated. And then I'm actually going to use a, a really cool topology brush in here to just draw out um, some guides that you can actually utilize to draw across. And actually, uh, you'll notice where I, I cross uh, uh, um, across these sort of hash lines here. Um, once they intersect one another um, and you have four sides, you actually generate uh, paw, uh, faces uh, amongst those vertices. So and then click on it and we can actually generate a face, which is really great. So I can actually make this protective guard on the outside of the hand there. 
Um, so just quickly moving this around, which will make this part of the glove. And then we will jump into uh, just a few of the additional elements that we're going to focus on this costume uh, before finishing up and getting um, getting over to character creator. I finished up that plate, um, used some of the internal Boolean functions to get a nice little clean uh, polish that surface there with, um, you know, some uh, futuristic details on those forms using some of... Uh, the included boolean um, insert brushes on that surface um, so everything is in place here the, the last element uh, that i have not uh, built out is actually that uh, future cyberpunk visor here so very quickly like any good model just you know establishing it with basic primitives going through and uh, refining some of these forms based on what I had in that sketch. Um, the sketch really is there uh, just to be uh, the loose architecture for what I'm going to move forward with. So some of these things were just um, hinted at with some gestural lines or maybe some slight paint. Uh, so now it's really up to me to go in and you know, look at reference and look at some additional um, you know, real-world technologies that we do have to kind of figure out what the shape's uh, going to be. So it's kind of a combination of uh, headphones and VR headsets, so kind of pulling from a bunch of different sources here. Um, having this kind of capped over her ear so that uh, we can obviously get that kind of headphone aesthetic, playing around kind of warping, pushing, pulling, and I love that organic process. So we've moved a little bit further along here. You can see that... Uh, Primitives have been established. I'm using some uh, insert uh, meshes to, uh, to to cut out. Just uh, establishing these kind of eye slits. And uh, those will actually come in handy. So what we'll use uh, when we perform the Boolean function, you can see I'm actually applying a different material here because I want access to that separately. Uh, down the road um, because I can actually hold on to that polygroup uh, down the road and use that to uh, generate some maps that I can bring over to character creator including um, um, a mask that can be used in the glow um, uh, sort of texture area um, which is super handy so when i want to isolate it to those specific eye slits on that visor um just kind of planning ahead as, as much as i can at this stage so i don't have to come back later on and, and make too many tweaks or too many changes so we're going to jump forward just a little bit further until we kind of finish up this visor and and really finish up uh our character as as a whole just adding some last uh, little nuts and bolts here to finish up the visor and then jumping into uh, really just finishing up uh, a few of the areas on the design that I felt uh, could use just a, a little extra detail. So using the spotlight projection uh, under the texture palette to bring in some alphas and uh, duplicate them. Uh, just to uh, get to kind of this interesting weave pattern, um, kind of like a Kevlar vest across uh, the center of that breastplate. So, so the last bit I do here is just unifying some of that red on that lower abdominal plate to bring uh, those pieces together um, so that they can actually be worn together on our avatar inside of Character Creator 3. As we wrap up the ZBrush portion, um, at least on the sculpting and modeling side of things, uh, we're going to get the geometry to a place where we can actually get it back over to Character Creator 3, whether that's decimating down some of the higher resolution models or exporting out the lowest subdivision level and baking uh, maps uh, to get them over to Character Creator 3. So I'm excited to get the... Uh, these different pieces over there and get our character pose and really bring her to life. So see you over in character creator three.